I am more and more convinced that because Bible readers generally are not convinced of the unitary monotheism of Jesus as reciting the Shema, which is not a Trinitarian creed. And so it remains a very remarkable fact that Christianity is the only world religion which in a sense begins by discarding its own founder's creed. That ought not to be. I think church goers do, don't realize that they're receiving the faith through the filter of a lot of Greek philosophy which came after Bible times. And so with that in mind, the text in Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 and 16 should not be a problem, should not be difficult. In verse 15 of Colossians 1, Paul says this, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. Of course, the visible image is the subject in discussion here. The visible image of the invisible God. God, of course, I remind you, is 1,300 times the Father in the New Testament. And Jesus, in verse 15 of Colossians 1, is also the firstborn of all creation. God is not the firstborn. Firstborn is simply a messianic title from Psalm 89, verse 27, where God says that he will make the Messiah his firstborn and defines it then as the highest of the kings of the earth. That's a reference to Messiah as the ruler of the world in the future when he comes back. He's the highest of a series of kings, the Christians being the other kings who rule in that future kingdom with Jesus. So having defined Jesus as the image, the visible image, Adam, I remind you, is the image of God too. So the second Adam is likewise the image of the invisible God, God the Father, the one God. And then in verse 16, Paul explains this further. He says, for, that little explanatory word in Greek, har, for in him, not by him. That's a grand mistranslation to suggest the idea that Jesus was the creator. I remind you, that 50 times in the Bible, God is said to be the creator. And not only that, he's the creator absolutely solo. Isaiah 44, 24 says, nobody was with God when he did the creating. Nobody. There's no son there. Jesus is not the co-creator in the first creation, but he's very heavily involved in the new creation. So in him is, a wrong, is the right translation, but in him doesn't convey very much even in English. And so I like uh, James Dunn, Dr. James Dunn's rendering here, with Jesus in intention, or if you look at Moulton Milligan grammar, the N here is said to be causal, because of Jesus. With Jesus in intention, all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth. That's a reference to the first creation. It doesn't say that Jesus was responsible for the first creation. After all, it was God who rested on the seventh day, not Jesus. With Jesus in mind, with Jesus in intention, because of Jesus, everything in that first creation came into being, visible and invisible, and particularly thrones and authorities, dominions, rulers, and so on. He's thinking of the authority structure of the universe, of, the, of our world. And Jesus, then, is the one whom God, the Father, the only true God, had in mind in that first creation. And we have a very interesting point there about the verb tenses in this particular verse. And I refer you to grammatical insights into the New Testament by the very distinguished Nigel Turner on page 125. He points to an extraordinary change, startling and definitive change of verb tense in this particular verse. The creation, the first creation, where Jesus was in mind, you have an heiress there. They were created by God. It's a divine passive, as scholars call it. Everything was created in that first creation by God, with Jesus in mind. And then he changes the verb tense at the end of this verse by saying all things have been created through him. Very startling. The heiress refers to the original first creation, which was with Jesus in, in intention, and then Everything now in the new creation stands created, has been creating, has been created, I should say. Has been created, I should say. And so Nigel Turner heads this paragraph about Colossians 1.16 like this. They have been and are being created. That's a very interesting translation. Everything currently in the new creation is through Jesus. The with the genesis. I'm using the modern Greek pronunciation here. 
But everything in the early first creation was by God with Jesus in mind. And that's an aorist tense. So that change of tense then shows that we're dealing with two creations very, very cleverly, Paul here is embracing the first creation, which had Jesus in mind, of course, because everything was set up with him in mind. And then he switches to the different preposition, via, meaning through. And that stands created in the new creation. Uh, Nigel Turner renders that perfect there as are being created correctly, because a perfect tense in Greek implies the present results of that activity. So be it noted then, be it noted very carefully that Paul uses the via preposition, descriptive of the present creation, which is all through Jesus, but in Jesus, in Jesus, with him in mind, refers to the first creation. That's very subtly done, and that verb tense needs to be carefully noted. I observe also one other thing, that in the uh, Greek New Testament, Exposter's Greek New Testament, he flat out says, by him is just wrong. It's mistaken to say, by him, everything was created. That makes Jesus the creator, usurps the position of the one and only true God. Yes, Jesus is heavily involved, in the new creation as co-creator. And he's creating, of course, sons and daughters who are to be administrators, governors with him in the future kingdom. Don't you know, Paul says in Colossians 6, don't you know that the saints are going to manage the world? That's a very much under-preached um, idea. Permeates both testaments. And reminiscent, of course, of Daniel 7, 27, which says that all authorities and all nations, all powers and dominions are going to serve and obey the saints. That's rather shocking. But read that correctly in the RSV, Daniel 7, 27. Everything in this new creation is being worked through Jesus, and we are being called to help supervise the world. And it certainly needs a lot of supervision.